What's good guys, it's Khalil Jamar. Hope that all is well with you guys. If this is your first time on my channel, welcome. If this is not your first time on my channel, welcome back. Once again, I have not been able to make a video in a pretty long time. I've been taking on a lot in my life recently and one of the things I was actually able to take on, which is of course the subject of this video, is my first powerlifting meet. Now, in this video, I do want to talk about uh, how I prepped for the meet and how the meet went so that I can potentially best help someone else uh, get ready for their first meet or prepare for their upcoming competition. Now, I did prep for this meet for about nine weeks. And looking back, I do wish that I took a little bit more time to prepare for the meet. The reason I do say this is because nine weeks for me did bring on a lot of fatigue. And I think that uh, it was because I had a shorter amount of, or shorter amount of time to prepare. So I had to do more work within a shorter period of time. But if I took 12 to 15 weeks, I would have been able to do the same amount of work, but get more rest and recovery. And as we all know, rest and recovery are two of the most essential things uh, that you need in order to uh, not only get stronger, but to see improvement on all three of your lifts. That said though, I did see a lot of good progress on all three lifts. I was able to actually PR uh, on my deadlift and hit a 600 pound deadlift and while necessarily uh, my bench press or squat didn't increase the way the weight moved did so for example uh, prior to prep i was moving 375 pounds at an rpe of you know maybe 8.5 to 9 sometimes 10 uh, after prep and you know toward the end of prep i was moving 375 for an rpe of you know 7.5 to 8 same thing with squat essentially um, I was able to move the weight uh, much easier, more effectively, much more efficiently. And this is with me feeling fatigue. So to me, that is a good sign that I was getting stronger. Uh, now about the fatigue thing, I do think that there were other reasons outside of prep being nine weeks that I did feel fatigue. Uh, one of the things that I didn't realize that I was doing incorrectly is that I was not preparing my body uh, properly for each session that I came in to lift. Basically, I wasn't warming up correctly. What my warm-ups looked like in the beginning of prep and you know toward the middle of prep before I changed how I was warming up, I would just come in, walk on the treadmill at an incline for three to five minutes, and then do a few static stretches and go straight into my main lifts for the day. Now, some people can get away with that, but me personally, I, I can't, you know, I can't do that. And I had to learn that about myself. Because of that, I do think it added to the fatigue that I was feeling. Overall, though, again, I do think that prep went very well. I was able to total 1,511 pounds uh, at my meet. I was able to squat 536 pounds. I was able to bench press 375 pounds. I was able to deadlift 600 pounds. Uh, now, with that said, even though you know, I, I'm happy with what I was able to total. I do think I could have totaled a little bit more if I was able to plan out my attempts correctly. I do think that I could bench, pro I don't think, I know I can bench press more than 375 pounds. Um, and I think that I could have squatted more than 536 pounds. I think I was gassed at the end of uh, deadlifts, which is why I couldn't move more weight than 600. But, you know, all in all, I think everything went well. I think next time, of course, there are things that I need to get better at. And I think that uh, it comes down to being smart about how I'm choosing my attempts um, and, it, you know, making sure that I'm choosing my attempts so that I can get the highest total that I possibly can. Now, at the meet, squats was easily uh, my best lift of the day. I went three for three and got all white lights on each uh, squat attempt, which for me is funny and it's a little bit weird because squats was the thing that I was most nervous for and I thought it was the uh lift that i was going to perform the worst on say this because if you're going into your first meet and you're feeling a little bit nervous one i want to say it's a good thing if you're a little bit nervous because it means that you care and if you care you're going to make sure that you do perform as well as you possibly can two what i realized i wasn't necessarily nervous or scared of squatting i was nervous about being in a completely different environment than I'm used to and being a bunch of uh, being around a bunch of people uh, that I've never met before and that I don't know because I was squatting first uh, that was the lift that I was most anxious for because I just wanted to uh, get that out the way I, I wanted to you know get to bench press 
as soon as possible. I just wanted to get that those first three squats out the way. But honestly, once I got the first squat attempt out the way, all my nerves left. Um, and for the rest of the day, I wasn't nervous and I was just having fun. So if you are nervous, just remember it is a good thing to remember, you know what you're doing throughout your prep. You're going to be performing each lift enough times that your body, your mind and your body is just going to naturally know how to do the lift. It, it's going it, to, it's going to do it that many times that there's no reason for you to, uh, fear messing up or anything like that. You know what you're doing. Uh, just know that your nervousness is probably attributed to, you know, going into a completely different environment and being around people you don't know. Uh, but what you will find, even though you're walking into a meet, you're going into a meet and it's going to be a competitive environment. M most of the time, it it's their first meet as well. Most of the competitors there, it's going to be their first meet as well. Also, even though, again, it is a competitive environment, the people there, the competitors there, everybody wants to see you do well. Everybody wants to see you do good. Um, me personally, people were asking, you know, asking me, you know, what PRs I was going for. And they were interested in seeing, you know, they, they were interested in seeing me hit PRs and they were genuinely rooting for me. And these are people I just met like two hours ago. And I think that you know, we, we, you know, the people there and the competitors there have that type of connection because everybody is feeling the same. Everybody is feeling a little bit nervous. Everybody is feeling a little bit anxious. Again, a lot of people there is going to be their first time as well. So you're going to kind of bond with these people because you guys all feel the same. And you, you know, if, if you feel the same way as somebody else and you can empathize with them, oftentimes you want to do anything uh, to make them feel better because in turn, you're going to feel better as well. And you're going to be feel more comfortable as well. Now, going back to prep, uh, while you're prepping, one of the things that I do advise and one of the things I had to learn, one of the things I realized after the meet is um, you want to try to minimize as many distractions as possible, especially uh, the few weeks before you're going into your first meet. The reason I say this is because uh, the more you minimize your distractions, the more you're going to be able to pay attention to the things that you're doing right and you're doing wrong. Um, the more you are able to uh, notice what you're doing right and pay attention to do what you're doing right, not only will you continue to do those things correctly, but you can actually approve upon those things and get even better. The same thing goes for when you're doing something wrong. Now, I'll give you an example of w with myself, and I do think that I wasn't as focused and paying attention as much as I should have been toward the end of my prep, somebody had pointed out that I was not pulling slack out of the dead out of, out of the bar when I was deadlifting. And I was oftentimes one of the things I felt with fatigue was uh, lower back soreness, not necessarily pain, but soreness. I do think that if I was paying attention to that and using that as a signal that I was doing something wrong earlier, I would have been able to correct the issue I was having with deadlifting earlier. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever heard this saying before, but there's a saying, if you don't pull the slack out the bar, slack is gonna pull this, the, well, if you don't pull the slack out of the bar, the bar will pull the slack out of you. And, you know, when you're getting up, you know, to heavy weights, like over 500 pounds, like you, you feel the weight pulling, you know, you feel that shock. And that was probably one of the other things too that was adding to my fatigue. So, you know, if I was paying attention a little bit more, if I caught that problem a little bit earlier, uh, not only do I think I would have gotten rid of lower back soreness, when I did, you know, I'm still learning how to pull the slack out the bar, but I can feel the difference in my lower back. I don't feel as much lower back soreness at all. I feel way more leg drive, but I do, you know, outside of that, I do think that if I caught on to that earlier, I would have been able to see even more progress on the amount of weight I was able to lift on the deadlift. Uh, one of the things I did mention is that somebody pointed this out to me. If you're able to have this or have someone during prep evaluate what you're doing, uh, I definitely recommend it because somebody else watching you and watching what you're doing, they're going to catch mistakes and errors that you're making faster than you are. It's kind of like when you write a paper, right? When you write a paper, when you proofread it, oftentimes you miss a lot of the mistakes uh, that's in there because you're reading it the way you imagine it's supposed to sound. You give that same paper and that same writing to somebody else, they're going to catch way more errors and mistakes 
uh, than you even realize was in there because they're reading it from an objective lens. The same thing, in my opinion, goes for lifting. For example, let's take my deadlift problem and not pulling the slack out of the bar. There was a time in prep when I was able to deadlift 584 pounds and I was ecstatic. I was happy. It moves fast, in my opinion, and I thought I did a great job. But somebody pointed out again that I was not pulling the slack out of the bar. When I and when they told me that, I realized that, oh, I, I got to, you know, I have to fix this problem. It's probably going to increase not probably sorry it is going to increase my deadlift so having somebody there and having uh, someone evaluate what you're doing is going to be nothing but beneficial and it's going to help you become a better power lifter now make sure this person whoever is evaluating you or giving you advice uh, knows how to lift properly it doesn't necessarily matter how much weight they're lifting but it does matter how they're lifting the weight now one of the last lessons i kind of learned after prep after the meet is you want to talk to as many power lifters as possible now of course talking to more experienced power lifters is going to yield more quality information that's going to get you better but if you are open to learning you'll pick up on something that you could potentially add to your arsenal in order to make you a better power lifter and guys honestly you should be like that with everything in your life you should always be open to learning and you should always be a sponge because learning is what gets us better the faster you're able to learn the faster you're going to get better guys that is the end of the video if you have any other questions about my prep or any advice of your own definitely leave that down in the comment section as always thank you for watching make sure that you do like the video subscribe to the channel see you guys later